Good evening, gang. It's Wednesday, the 3rd of June, 2015. A warm welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk or tonight's late night chat show. Now, we haven't been here for a couple of weeks due to my best friend being in hospital. Oh, poor old soul he is, dear. But he's out of hospital now. He has recovered. And if... If you are a periscope viewer, boys and girls, you will have seen a few little insights into his poor, poor illness. Oh yes, indeed today. Today, in the afternoon, we went live with our secret filming, boys and girls. Secret filming. Okay? To the doctor's surgery, where we all observed him having his staples removed from his stomach. And they really are like staples. Hang on a minute. I've got one here, haven't I? There we are. One minute. One minute, one minute. Yeah. So they really do look like. No, I haven't got, and I haven't actually got one of the staples. No, I haven't got one of the staples. Okay, but they look like they've come out of a staple gun like that. I mean, I could put a couple of my staples in my face now if you wanted me to. Does anyone want me to do that? Okay, we are coming to you today live via YouTube and also live via Periscope as well. Um, and it should be working a lot better now because you are hearing the sound direct from number one, the posh microphone. Well, it's not posh, the, the proper microphone. And number two, all the sound is coming straight through here now rather than through the little microphone um, in the thing there. OK, um, uh, just going back to that secret filming thing again, of course, um, I did it. I, I mean, I could have asked. We could have asked. In fact, at one point I did ask, you know, do you mind if I film you taking the staples out? And she said no. Lovely, lovely nurse. Lovely nurse. But I wasn't sure she'd say yes. So that's why we started the camera before we went in. And what I've got is like a string tied around the top of my iPhone. OK. And it hangs at my chest. Now, people don't know if it's on or not. Right. So if now what I do now, if I'm going into what I think might be some sort of situation, you know, not necessarily serious, maybe funny or something like that. I start the camera off. No one knows. No one knows. And before any of you say, oh, that's terrible. You should tell us how many cameras do you think have you got watching you all over the place doing every single possible activity that you could possibly want, dear? You know, the cameras are watching all the time. So people. People of the revolution, now is the time to take the power back into your own hands. When you go in those council offices, when you go into Curry's or anywhere else to complain, get that camera on. Start playing on them at their own game. Who's that there? Evening, Terry. Who's switching to YouTube? Why is that, Terry? Is there a reason... You're switching to YouTube. Oh, is this not working properly on Periscope? Please let me know if it's not. That is very... very... Oh. Why is that, Terry? Why, why, why are you switching to YouTube? Is it not working? Oh, is it you? That's not... I'm sure it's working here. Uh, so there we are. Michael. Uh, hello, Joey. People coming through. Hello, Wendy. No, it's working fine there. Yeah, that's what you've got to do. You've got to get a camera on. OK, thank you, Chris. You've got to get a camera on you somewhere. And... The way I do it is literally, it's a string, it's, uh, I think it's called a lanyard, which I actually bought from uh, Maplins for about three pounds, okay? But you don't have to buy a special thing. All you need is a piece of, you know, decent cord. You don't want some old bit of string hanging round you, do you? Oh, no! A bit of string hanging round your blooming thing like that? No, 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 no. Get a decent bit of cord. It's only going to cost you a couple of quid, maybe from B&Q or... One of those DIY places, hang, you know, attach it to your camera case, round your shoulder, then turn it on, right? Turn it on to record, but turn it round so the little camera is exposed. How does anyone know you're filming? They don't. You know, get them back at their own game. Whenever you're in a situation of anything at all, then then turn it on and then go into the situation, OK? Today, it was just simply filming my blow. Now, my, my, uh, my best mate. Um, the thing is, I thought, well, if I ask, could they snatch it from you? Well, I suppose so, Terry. You know, they're not going to get anything off me, dear. Oh, dear me. I can't remember when the last person who got anything out of me other than a bunch of flowers. To be honest, 
but, but I didn't ask her before we went in because I thought she might say no. And the only reason she would say no, or oh, maybe they're filming me waiting for me to make a mistake, then they're going to claim a load of money. You know what people are like? And of course, this I'm sorry to our American friends who are with us on this Wednesday night. But I have to say, this whole, you know, suing business for this, suing people for that, you know, it's all come from the States. It really has. We never used to sue people over here. You know, if things happened, it was generally considered a mistake. It was generally considered a mistake. If something went wrong, maybe you tripped over a paving stone or, you know, uh, you you nearly drowned in a swimming pool or you picked up some terrible disease from some disgusting person who sneezed in your face while on a tube. Well, you know, you would just pass that off. Oh, a bit of an accident, you know. It was it was never classed as something you would sue for. But then in America, everyone was suing everyone left, right and centre. And it's happening here now. I mean, I've actually heard, OK, that certain people who have been to hospital over the years, you know, they might have gone in to have perhaps a foot removed and they accidentally remove an arm. And they're actually suing the hospital for such a small, insignificant mistake. What? planet are they on? You know, mistakes happened here. People, you know, perhaps with a bad kidney, they go in, they have the wrong kidney removed, so they're left with the bad one, and then they complain. Well, it's only a little mistake, dear. Why on earth people have to go around suing each other left, right and centre? I do not know. You know, even doing the show. Now, if I was in America... If I was in America, and the Americans will correct me here if I'm wrong, OK? They can... Jimmy Butler is in the house. We have to stop the show for my nephew, Jimmy Butler, Prince Jimmy of Woodall, where the girls are pretending now, apparently, the girls in Woodall Spa and surrounding areas, and surrounding areas, are now apparently pretending that they're going out with my nephew and telling their friends, oh, I've got a date with Jimmy Butler. That's true. That is absolutely true. Anyway, can we get on with the story, please? Yeah, they are actually, you know, suing people left, right and centre for tiny, insignificant mistakes. Why do they do that? If I was in America... Good night, Jimmy. It's at work tomorrow. Good night. Um, <clears throat> Terry, if you were with us at the beginning of the show, you would know how this works. I'll tell you again later. Please. Um, now, where was I? I mustn't be distracted by the messages. We must carry on with the show with us. Um... I've, I've lost my plot. I've lost the place now. Oh, hang on. No, we're going back. Just a moment. No, we're going back to suing. Yes. If I was in America doing this show, OK, I probably would have had to sign all sorts of bits of paper to stop anyone suing me for causing them unnecessary distress simply by sitting there watching this show. It's true. I'm absolutely true. You know, it wouldn't occur to them for one moment to turn it off. Oh, no. It's like these people who put comments. You know, the people that put comments. And I've mentioned this a couple of times. I got fed up with stupid comments being put on my Facebook wall. You know, if I put something on there that I think might be funny, like um, a woman falling out of a tube... Uh, a tube or a cyclist, you know, being uh, knocked off his bike and, and it looks funny. You know, I'll put it up there and it's like, oh, they shouldn't be laughing at things like that. They might be really hurt. Oh, for God's sake, get a sense of humour. And I'm fed up with that. And you see, and people could sue for that. If, if I was in America, people could sue. Oh, oh, you've, re you've hurt my feelings. Oh, that's worth money, that is. Oh, get a life. What planet are you on, dear? You know, you've got to have a laugh in life. We've all got, you know, things wrong with us. I've got a little thing wrong with me, which I don't mention, you know. But if I wanted to, I would sit here and rip myself to shreds and laugh in the face of it. I absolutely would. So there we are. <laughs> there is an email address if you want to join in. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk Um... There is also uh, a Skype. Now, if you want to call in, you can do so by Skype or telephone number. 
The Skype is coming up on the YouTube thing. There we are. That's a Skype up for you there. Uh, the Skype username is United Kingdom Talk. OK, all one word, United Kingdom Talk. There's also a phone number, 020-8144-3477. OK, 020-8144-3477. <clears throat> Before we go on, uh, I just wanted to say a little bit, just a tiny bit, because don't, I don't want to go on about it, the app called Periscope. We now carry the show live on Periscope. I do a lot of little shows during a day on Periscope. Five minutes here, half an hour there. We do have a bit of a laugh on there, OK? Um, and if you want to join us on Periscope, it's a free app available on Android and um, Apple devices. My username is Chris Reardon UK. Chris Reardon UK. All right, we've got a phone call already. Hello to Millie in Minnesota, who's just calling in there. Hello, Millie. Hello, my darling. How are you? Just a second, my darling. Just uh, talk again. I've got to whack you up a little bit. How are you <laughs> doing, Chris? That's better. I'm um, very well, Millie. Lovely to hear from you, my darling. <laughs> so you wanted... You asked me a question off camera. Yes. Before the show started. Yes. And you wanted to know if I rent the place where I work, my yeah. flat. It's and the sh- answer... But the thing is, Millie, I haven't got on to that yet, darling. Well, have you been listening to the show? Yes, dear. <laughs> you haven't, have you? We haven't got on yes, to that bit. I have. Right. Oh, what I was going to say is um, I heard this chap on the um, radio the other night talking about rent capping. Now, um, we have um, a Conservative government now led by David Cameron... But just before the election, Mm. the Labour chap, um, Ed Miliband, who's Miliband, who's since resigned, he was talking about having rent caps because the rents, certainly in London, are going up and up. I mean, it was bad enough with the house prices. Barely anyone, you know, can have, um, can can afford a house in London, right? If Mm. I wanted to have a house in London, I'd have to sell an awful lot just to get one place. We're talking one-bedroom flats, certainly in central London. Well, say goodbye to a million pounds. I mean, who's got a million pounds? All right? Um, And it has since followed that the rents now, also in London, are climbing up to extortionate rates. I don't know how people on minimum wages actually afford anywhere to live in London. I mean, it's be- it really is beyond me uh, they can afford to live in London anymore, right? Mm-hmm. And Ed Miliband wanted to set a rate cap, a, a, a rent cap, so it, it could go, only go up so far and you couldn't, you couldn't increase it by any more. He wasn't going to reduce rents. So those that are already finding it too high... Um, you know, that, that wouldn't help them. What he was, I think what he was suggesting, and it's, it's open to all sorts of things, what he was suggesting is that the rents only went up by a certain amount each year. I don't even know exactly what it was. I think it was by perhaps inflation and a little bit more. And I just wanted, wondered what you thought about that, Millie. Do you I, think rents you know should what? be capped? How does it work in the States? Oh, a light's just gone off. I was just gonna. I was just gonna tell. I was just gonna tell you about that. Um, right now, well, I, I shouldn't say right now, but I live in subsidized housing. Yep. Which means that they take thirty percent of my income, and I'm not gonna say how much I get per month, but I'm on disability benefits. Yes. Uh, because of just, my father. Just, um... Just explain to people uh, your situation, Millie, because there's a lot of new people today who haven't seen us before. Okay. Okay. For those of you that don't know, I'm called Motorized Millie by Chris. He was he gave me that nickname years ago. And the reason for that is because I use a motorized chair to get around because of being born with something called cerebral palsy. Now, that means that I would need a place that has staff available to me plus um, things such as a cooker and refrigerator to be where I can reach them. 
and I and I live in subsidized housing, which means that they take thirty percent of my income each each month. Now, right now, I am paying two hundred dollars per month in rent, but you have to realize that 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 um, that includes uh, laundry and you know repair work that might need to be done does not include utilities i pay for those myself right but um, do you, do, does your rent go up annually how does that work yes that's correct it does the people, go up. they want to know yes uh, millie is in minnesota in the usa uh, someone's saying why doesn't she have an american accent uh, are you deaf she does have an American accent. You want to go, have know. you got some of that earwax that you might want to put in your ear? Can't you hear the American accent? God's sake. Carry on, Millie. Do you, does it go up a little bit each, um, each year or what? How does that work? Yes, and the reason why it goes up each year is because my Social Security, my disability benefits go up each year right and as i said they take 30 percent of my the rent takes 30 percent of my income so if my disability benefits go up so does my rent right i see so when your rent goes up your disability goes up so are you actually any worse off or does it does it kind of work out it works it works out. Um, yeah. I would be in a lot worse shape, I think, if it weren't for the benefits that I would... If I was just getting straight disability benefits yeah. and not benefits because of my deceased father, right. I, would, I would be, I think, a lot worse off. You would be worse off. I believe so, yeah. Okay, now look, here's, here's a question for you. OK, and anyone else who wants to answer this a little bit late, uh, later on. Oh, uh, uh, and, and I've got a, a few messages coming through on the um, uh, Skype. Thank you for your messages. I've got them all here. I'll do them in a second. OK, um, Terry gets housing benefit and DLA rent is one hundred and twenty five pounds a month. So mm. that's interesting. Um, do, are, are you uh, Terry? I wonder uh, who's sending a message in there. Are you, d does your rent go up? And, and when the rent goes up, are you worse off or better off, Terry? You know, interesting, interesting to say that. Here's a question for you, Wendy, and indeed anyone else. Now, I feel a little bit at the moment, I'm a little, in a little bit of a quandary, right? As you know, I am a landlord. Uh, when mum and dad died with my half of the money, I invested it into properties and that's it, right? I am fully managed, okay? I am fully managed by an estate agent. So, here's how it works. I have the property. I go to an estate agent. I say, I've got this property. I want to let this out. How much will you charge me? They come back to me. Okay, we'll charge you 12% of your income, rental income to let that out. And then you, you're yes or no. So I'm yes. So that's what they do to me. Now, I am paying them to deal with everything from top to bottom. I never, ever have any contact with any of the tenants from the day they inquire about renting a property to the day they leave that property. I never see them. I don't know them. Nothing. All I know is what the estate agent tells me. Now, each year, as is right with everything, generally there is a small increase in the rent, okay? Now, that rental increase is generally somewhere between 15 and 25 pounds per month, okay? So that's, that's, that's the increase, generally. There is a lady who has been renting one of my flats and she has now been there for 12, 13 years. Her rent, I now only allow to go up by £10 per month, per year. Because she's been there a long time. She's never, ever once defaulted 
on her rent. She never complains unless there's something to complain about. She's a really good tenant. And in return, I give her um, a little, just a very, very small rental increase each month. Uh, once, you know, each year. So a year goes by and then her rent goes up £10 a month. Get it? Gotcha. So I was quite shocked on Monday when one of the other properties is about to come up for renewal. Once a year, all the properties come up for renewal. Okay? So they're there a year, then they say, okay, you know, the, the estate agent writes to me, they say, yep, um, they've been there, uh, we're coming up to a year again now, um, we, uh, and then they start giving advice, right? Yeah. And it's usually, we think, the rent should either stay the same or should go up by whatever amount. Mm -hmm. This time, I got this email from the estate agent telling me that the rent in so-and-so, they've nearly been there a year now, and it says, as per their contract, is inbuilt an automatic increase of 5% a year okay that doesn't mean anything to you until you know the figures so we think um, are you happy to go ahead with a rent uh, us us telling them that the rent for the next year will increase by 37 pounds so that's $58. That's a $58 increase per month. Chris, can I ask you, sorry, can uh, I ask you a question? Yes. Um, what, I mean, are the people that normally rent from you uh, pensioners? Oh, um, no, 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 no. They're generally people that are working. Okay, okay. Yeah, I don't okay. have, I, actually, I do have two pensioners up north. Um, but down here, they're all working people, um, one, one person on a uh, disability thing like yourself, okay? Okay. All right. All right. Gotcha. Uh, it has to be said that the people on the disability, their rent is paid by the council, and it is less than the going rate. But that's okay. I'm not greedy. All right? No, you never and have that. On the subject of the greed, I got this email, and I thought, £37 increase per month and I thought that sounds like a hell of an increase to me and I'm I'm a bit stuck here because on one side of the coin I'm thinking okay I pay the estate agent a considerable sum of money I think per year for each, remember, this is for each flat. 12% for each flat, right? I pay them a considerable amount of money each year to do this job. To look after the flats, to automatically um, uh, look after them, to get rid of people if they're, if they're not good tenants, to get new people in, to look after tenants. I pay them to do everything. And they are saying to me that the rent goes up 30 should go up 37 pounds in a month mm -hmm. but i'm thinking i don't think i can i can do that you know it does we're seem not right talking to me. we're not talking legally no whether or not i'm talking morally. in good conscience yes i'm talking consciously maybe morally if you will Huh? Right, talking I, about it. I absolutely expect a little increase each year. £25 to me, so that's about six quid a week, to me, set, now, even to me, that sounds like the upper end of an increase. Now, many times before, many times, 
where they've gone and said, OK, your rent's going up £25 uh, this month. And then the tenants come back to them and said, well, we, we don't want to pay another £25. Um, and then they've come back to me and said, the tenant doesn't want to pay, pay another £25. And then I will say, OK, um, ask them 15 Right, and then they go back and offer fifteen, and the tenant comes back and always says yes, always, always. Okay, you know it's a little bit of give and a little bit of take. That's how I am. Maybe I'm not a very good businessman. See, to me, it's not all about getting as much money as you possibly can about someone. Now, I know many, many people like that in all sorts of businesses whose only goal in life is to screw as much money out of someone as they possibly can. Now, I don't, I don't like to feel, feel I am like that. So I've got this thing for £37. I'm thinking that's too much. Shall I go back to the estate agent and say, no, you, you can't increase it like that, even though it's written in their contract that it goes up 5% a year? Even though it's in their contract, I'm thinking that's too much. Yeah, it right? seems it seems too much to me too. And yeah. actually, Chris, you are. I mean, I would think. I mean, if I were one of your tenants, I would be. I would consider you to be a, a breath of fresh air because even over here, um, the you know, the state and, you know, all of, you know, people that are disabled, whether yeah. visibly or invisibly, um, you know, they, they only look after the almighty dollar and forget about what, forget about they what forget the They forget about people, people. Yeah. And, you know, I would consider you to be a huge breath of fresh air. Because there's not enough people that are considering that these days. No, like they, they're all after the money. So I don't know what to do. You know, even though I'm paying them to do the job, but I think it's too much. For I me do. To and go, I would, for me, me to go and back to them. I would at least personally just email them and say, look, um, yeah. I know that it's in the contract, but mm. even this just seems a little bit too much. I mean, I think it would be worth at least going back and, and talking I think, to them. I think it's a huge increase. You're looking at £400 a year increase. Yeah. That's what it works out to, around about £400 a year. And I think right. it's too much. It is. And I of think course, it would... It, it also has to be said, you know, that the more money the estate agent makes me, the more they get. And I, I, I think maybe... There's there's something going on there as well. What do you reckon? It sure sounds like it to me. Is there any way mm. that I mean, do you have the option if they turn out to be a bunch of uh people that are not willing to listen to you? Do you have the option of going to another No, no, no. No, no. The estate agent works for me. OK, if I go down there and tell them now, nope, you're not to increase that rent. They can't increase it. Okay. But the, the point is, they, they've never let me down, if you see what I mean. Um, right. I always go along with anything that they suggest, and I've, I've, I've never been let, let down the wrong path, so to speak. All right? right. Now, so thank you, Millie. You know, that's from a tenant's point of view, I hear what you're saying. You're saying, listen to yourself, Chris. Go back there and tell them it's too, too dear, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Right. Thank you, Millie. I'd like to carry this on with someone else, if possible. Thanks for calling in, my darling. Yep. All right, you take care. Lots of love, Millie. Bye-bye now. There we are, Millie in Minnesota. I wonder if we have any business people watching or listening to the show today. What would you do? They're saying I should go for the whole 5%. It's written in the contract. Thirty-seven pounds. Interestingly enough, I spoke to my best mate Ron about that, and he too thought it was a bit pricey. However, his other half, who is a lot younger, didn't think it was much at all. Thirty-seven quid. He said, "Well, what's that work out to a week?" And I'm like, "Well, well I don't know. Thirty-seven, eight pounds." He said, "That's nothing. Go for it." Is it? Is it an age thing? I mean, I'm, I've always 
Ant, that's interesting. Ant actually thinks it's fair. You actually think it's fair to go up £37? I have no contact with the tenants at all, Ant. None at all. I never do. So you actually think that's fair. By the way, I'm sorry, one of my lights, I think a bulb has blown over there and that's suddenly gone off. I might look a bit, bit like, look like I'm on the dark side of the moon there. Um, Terry thinks it's fair if you're working. Ant reckons, is, is it normal for rent to go up? £38? Because it seems a hell of a lot to me. we got a call coming in from London. Hello, who's on the line now, please? Hi, Chris. Hello. It's Ben. Hello, Ben. How are you? I'm fine. Now, are you anything to do with, like, landlords or tenants or housing, or what do you think? Uh, well, my daughter actually has two houses that she is letting. Are they in London? Uh, well... One's a flat in a house and the other one's a masonette. Yes. And as you say, the agents will come back to you each year and they'll, they, will, they will say that it is within the contract to increase up to 10%. Right. But what they are actually doing as well is they will sorry, be looking... Sorry, Ben. Did you just yep. say up to 10%? Yes. So your daughter... Rightly or wrongly, we're not going to go there, OK? No. Your daughter can quite legally increase the rent on a property by 10% in a year? Yes. OK, carry on. Now, the way it works is the letting agent will look around at other um, properties in the area, maybe that they're managing or that other agents are letting, and they will look at how much that rent has increased. And they will generally suggest an increase for your ch uh, in rents on your properties in line with the market rate. Because at, at the end of the day, they want to keep your business. And if they're not letting your properties, you're, you're going to end up finding someone else to let your properties. So that so you're saying they're trying to keep my business? Is that what it is? That their uh, their thinking is the more we get him, the more he's likely to stay. Is that what is that what you're saying? That's correct. Yes, because if if they increase them too much, and the tenants say no, we 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 can't afford that. We're going to move out. Right. Then you end up with an unlet property. Yes. And if it stays unlet. It's been their suggestion that you increase the rent, so it's them that have priced you out of the market. So really, it's just down to me, isn't it? Just, just, I just don't know what to do. I haven't, although I have no contact, I just feel that I don't want to be one of those people who grabs as much as possible and then maybe put someone in a worse situation than they are. You see, the, the other thing that happens is, is that people lie. And they will often say, well, I can't afford that, and even though they may have had a, a rise of 200 quid a month. I don't know that. That's right. But I don't know. No. The, the whole thing rests on a market economy, unfortunately. Yes. If you have long-standing tenants, um, personally, I agree with you. If, if I owned extra properties, that I, well, I do have one, but as you know, that's let out 11 months for the year yeah. uh, out in Florida. But that increase only goes up by what they call market value. Yes. Because I mean, it's Ant, left Ant, to an organisation. And quite rightly says it's supply and demand. Um, um, yes which, which, and which no. Is of course supply and demand, if there is uh, high demand and low supply, you can, you know, unscrupulous people will milk it for every penny it's worth. Yes. See, I don't want and to be one of those people. what they're actually doing is they're fueling 
the hype and the hiking of the prices yeah. because their one's gone up another person will think well they're getting that much more for theirs we'll get more for ours and it just leaps and goes up in leaps and it bounds. just goes up and up now some people would say um that you you can't you shouldn't cap rents because at some point they will find their natural top thing, if you, if you see what, their top price. It will get to the point where they're so high that no one can afford to, 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 to rent them. But, you know, I think, it's certainly in London, they're high enough now, aren't they? And yet, they still find people that can pay the money. Well, you, in London especially you have the situation where people can be spending up to 80% of their income really? just on their accommodation. Gosh. That's a lot of money, isn't it? It is. That's and a hell of a lot of money. Personally, I think the problem with London, you're, you're luck well, I'm lucky as well, although I'm sort of classified as Greater London. I'm yes. sort of out in the suburbs, so it's not that much. But even my three-bedroom house, uh, one sold two doors away that hasn't been extended. It doesn't have as big a garden. Right. And that sold for 600000 It's and like, I've you know, got an half a million... A garden. It's half a million pounds, isn't it? Well, it's <laughs> nearly three quarters. Gosh, that's so much. That's so much, isn't it? <laughs> yes. And as I told you, my property out in Florida is a million two dollars. Right. But it's very cheap to buy in Florida, isn't it? Well, when I when I had it built in 1986, it cost me forty thousand oh, dollars. All right, but what, what what can you pick places up for there now? Uh, the the prices in Central Florida, especially, are. They are very high, as are um, the properties around sort of um, Miami. Right. You can get what they call um, utility properties, which are sort of bed sits and things like that. Yes. Uh, but what you about, find they're usually poorly maintained. And but I mean, you know those, you know those like sort of wooden. They're almost like what we'd call a mobile home. There seems to be a hell of a lot of those out there in Florida. Look a bit like mobile homes, but not actually mobile homes. Uh, uh, they, they sell quite a lot of those on the cheap, don't they? We've well, an awful lot of property in Florida in Florida is made of wood. Yes, it's wood wood frame construction yeah. purely because they're in a hurricane path. Right. You, and, if you imagine a house being blown down, which it can do as mu easily in wood as it can in brick, right. it's cheaper to re put it back up again if it's made of wood than it is if it's made of brick. I see. I see. Did, did you, is it difficult to keep that going? I mean, you say that's rented out for 11 months of the year, didn't you? Uh, I well, my friend is a real estate agent out in Florida, and he manages it for me. Right. And it's rented out eleven months of the year to the U.S. Navy. Gosh, and does that make a bit of money for you? Okay, is it? Does it do all right, or does it tick over, or, or what? It does all right because they're also res the contract was written. They're also responsible for the maintenance. How absolutely fascinating! I, you, actually, I didn't know this. I don't remember you telling me this. Oh. I didn't, don't oh. remember, because, you know, I'm a great... I love Florida. I love I know it you there. Do. I well, love I it. Going to visit a mile the Mickey away Mouse from all the time Disney. and all that. <laughs> well, thanks for calling in, Ben. I appreciate your uh, your comments there, my friend. Always nice to talk to you, Chris. All right. Cheerio, Ben. Bye. Tell up. Now, uh, apparently Terry's going to sue me for fingers. F Terry's, Terry's uh, sending some of them did loads of hearts today. Thank you very much for those. Let's do some of the uh, messages here. Uh, Terry H up in Leeds says, I don't get any benefits. People think it's me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, ben, before he called in, said, says Periscope is running about 40 seconds ahead of YouTube. Must be trying to make the other girls, uh, my nephew is trying to make the other girls feel sorry for him or singing to them. Thank you. Um, what's that sent in by Sean? 
Uh, okay, thank you, Sean. Don't know where you got that subject from, but we're not doing that. Um, Shania can't decide whether to watch on YouTube or Periscope, so she's watching on both. You must have stereo eyes today. Uh, Chris says, do you as the landlord get to know the renters? Only if I want to, and I never do. I never do, and I'll tell you why, because that's what I'm paying the estate agent for, okay? They deal with everything from top to bottom. I pay them a small fault. It's 12%, so for every £100 rent, they take 12 Terry says it's worse since the bedroom tax increase of around 10 to £15 per month, so he's, he's worse off by about 10 or £15 a month there. Uh, Brandon says, don't you think it's a good idea for the tenants to meet you so they know who you are and have some contact with you no i don't no i don't that is why i'm paying the estate agent brandon you see that's why i pay the estate agent to deal with that i i don't want if there's any hassle involved anything like that the estate agent deals with it completely that that's that's the idea of paying them it takes all the worry out of your head okay um Let's just, uh, sorry, I'm just, just going for a few of these messages. I'm sorry you've been waiting a little while for us to pick up these messages, but we were um, kind of chatting away there. Uh, Gavin's with us as well. Good morning, Gavin. We don't do group calls. I see someone's been trying to do group calls there. We don't do those. Uh, hello to Jerry, who's with us on Skype as well. Good evening, Jerry. Uh, anyone else who wants to make any comment at all on the... Um, on the uh, on 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 the whole rent thing, please feel free to do so. If not, we'll move on. And hello to young Ryan. Hello Ryan, who says I wish I was in the show, but I can't tonight. No, it's it's half past eleven. You should be at school, Ryan, shouldn't you? Got to tell you, Ryan's um, one of my uh, Periscope friends, and he does his own shows now. He's only eleven years old. Uh, Terry uh, brings up the f subject of the Alton Tower accident. Your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, I, I don't go on roller coasters. End of story, Terry, simply because of something like this. I do wonder, um, and on, on a humorous side, and you know, I will always try and look at a humorous side of something, even, even terrible accidents. Um, don't people go on things like roller coasters to be scared out of their lives? Well, job done. You know, job done. <laughs> do you know it's really annoying me that that bulb out of order there can i do you mind if i just see if i've got another bulb to put in one second talk amongst yourselves for a while i'm sure i had another bulb here somewhere oh there it is oh there, is that is that a bulb there no it's not oh, what is this memory i've got memory come on where are you light bulb i know you're here somewhere i've got a spare bulb here somewhere i don't know why that's gone off Please work. No, I can't find it. I thought I had a spare bulb somewhere in here, but I can't find it. I don't know where that is. That's so annoying, that is. A light gone over there. No, I can't find. Do you know, I, I, I have. <laughs> I've got spare bits and pieces all over the place, you know, light. Oh, what's that over there? No, that's not, that's me accounts, isn't it? light bulbs and cables and things like that. In yeah. fact, only today, is it down there? No, I don't know where I've put that there. I have got spares of all sorts of things. Um, and even today, you know the cables that like, they've got two phono sockets at one end and a little plug on the other end to plug into your iPhone or headphones. Well, I've got dozens of those. And I wanted to find lamps. Sorry, lamps. I beg your pardon, lamps. Do you want to... Here, I'll tell you what, Michael. Can you get lamps? I'll buy you a coffee if you can get me one. Do you want to see what one it is? All right, hang on a minute. It's a... Oh, what do you call it? It's a twirly... Um, oh, um, fluorescent thing. One minute. I'll, 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 hang on a minute. They're quite big. I'm just unscrewing it, hang on. <laughs> Where's the spare one gone then? I had a spare one. It's one of these, look. Oh dear. Have you got one of those? It's, oh, I've, it's a, it's a, 
135 watts, 220 volts, and it's 5,500k. I think it's white. Have you got one of those? Yeah, that's what I have in my studio here. And that's the second one of those that's gone. Interesting enough, in the same holder. And either side of me, I've got these umbrella things. Have you got one of those at all? Let me hold it up there. Don't know if you can see that writing or not. Have you got one? Could, could you put one round now? You know, because I'm upset that it's not working. I hate it when light, lights go. It just went pop. It went ding and it went off and that was the end of it. Maybe it needs to cool down. I don't know. It's not hot now. I don't know why it went off. I'll see if I can find the other one later on. Oh, you don't have them? Oh. Do they do an LED equivalent of these now? They must do. I'd be better off with those because once you buy those, they don't go wrong, do they? Eh? Right, you can call in if you want to. Uh, we've got a Skype username. Call in about anything. Okay, I think we've done the rent thing now. The phone-in number is 020-8144-3477. 020-8144-3477. There's also a Skype in as well. If you'd like to Skype in, do you have Skype? Wonderful little thing. You can Skype in as well. The Skype username is United Kingdom Talk, okay? All one word, United Kingdom Talk. Now, I tell you what I saw today in the paper. This is this is actually this is well, this isn't today's paper to be honest. Okay, I've got this. Um, I've been holding on to this to show you. The Queen at the um, uh, the Queen's speech the other week, right? Oh bless her! Now I am a great great fan of the Royals. I love them. I know there's there's probably people watching this program at the moment that say, oh, no, you know, they cost us too much money and all this old rubbish. No, I love the royals. Not all of them. I mean, Princess Eugene and Beatrice. I mean, what are they all about? What do they do? What do they do? Please tell me now. Extended royal family, not too keen on that. But certainly the Queen and the rest of them, I think they're wonderful. We don't do group calls. How many times? One person call at a time. One person. Pay attention now. Look at this picture in the Daily Mail of the Queen at the thing. Terry's going to bed. Good night, Terry. Now, I'm sorry. You know, she's tired. She's really tired. Terry, where are you going? I can't believe you're leaving. Look, there's another couple of pictures here. And... I don't want the Queen to, to give up her work and all that or hand it on to anyone else. I think she's wonderful. But, you know, looking at these photos, hasn't she done enough now? Don't you think she's done enough? I, I, I just think she's done enough. I really do. We've got a call coming in. Hello, who's that, please? Hello, it's David. David Arbiter. How are you doing? Hello, David. David from... David Arbiter. I'm from Manchester. Hello, David. Oh, Manchester. Da, 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 da. Never watch the, the, it. The, the place where it always rains. Never watch it. I have been to around Manchester once, David. Um, oh, it's a while ago. I was doing a little job. Ashby... Della something or other, was it? Oh, yes, yes, yeah. No, I live near Weatherfield. All oh, right, okay. Where's where's the Ash Ashby Della something or other? What's it called? Ashby Della uh, de, de, de La Sol. That doesn't sound right. Was it Della Della Goosh? I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I did a little job up there a couple of years ago. So, Let me tell you why I'm ringing into uh, this evening. Yes, Chris, David. Yes, yes. Um, well, I think I, I, I think it's something that was in the uh, the papers, and it's it's been a lot online. But it's basically um, about this cyclist uh, chap that owns uh, a few coffee shops in uh, in South London. I don't know and about this. In... So 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 um, yeah, tell us. So so yeah, he was driving in his Range Rover, and oh, yeah. he was um, with a. Uh, uh, he didn't have the camera, but he he had an altercation. With um, with a cyclist oh. who had one of the, yeah, I um, remember uh, in Roehampton, and believe it or not, I used to live there. I know exactly 
that road and exactly where that happened. Let me just tell you, yeah, David. Did you see the video clip, Chris? I did. It's a very fast road, right? Yeah. Um, and at one end is uh, uh, sort of East Sheen, and at the other end is Richmond Park. And there's a lot of cyclists and cars use this road. So I know exactly what you're, the, the road you mean. Carry on, mate. Yeah, so basically, um, I watched this clip, um, and I was a bit incensed by it all, basically, because um, this this guy, I think he suffers from uh, short man syndrome. And I, look, basically, um, I, I, I don't like cyclists. I, I don't think uh, cyclists should be allowed in the UK. Um, I would ban bicycles um, altogether, um, basically because I think um, the, the type of people... That, um, they're, they're, we'll put it like this. There's, there's no accountability. You know, going through red lights, kicking, uh, kicking poor car drivers' doors and, and, and windows in. There's no accountability. You know, uh, you know, there's no number plates. There's no, there's no, you know, it's all very well them filming it. But, if, you know, what about us filming the cyclists? You know, so if it was up to me, if I was uh, running for, uh, you know, uh, d- 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 if I was running the country, yeah. I would, from Monday, ban cyclists in the UK altogether. Right. OK. Uh, and, uh, do you, do and you, you know what also I would do, Christopher? I, I would also, and this might be a bit controversial for your listeners, but I, would, I, I wouldn't have women driving in the same vehicles as men. And why is that then? Well, look, w- let's say golf. I know you don't like sport much, but in golf, they men play golf and women play golf. But women play off a different tee to the men because men are stronger and they play golf a little bit better well, not, than the not, women. Not necessarily. Have you, have you ever seen women boxing or, or women uh, rugby playing? I, I, yes, I've seen them, and they're not as good as men. Well, you know, hang on I, a minute. So, so you, you're giving me two things there. First of all, the cyclist. First of all, the cyclist, OK? So it's the cyclist's fault you're saying here, yeah? Well, no, I mean, the, 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 it was very aggressive, but I just don't When you like saw that. what happened, whose fault do you think it was? Well, it was... It, 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 it didn't really, uh, you know the road, but obviously when you watch that clip, it all starts with everyone effing and blinding, and you can't really tell um, whose fault it actually was. Right. But the, the way the driver um, uh, started off... You're fading um, in and out there. Please speak into the microphone, dear. Yes, yeah, sorry, Christopher. Um, you don't mind me calling you Christopher, do you? No, not at all, Ant. Go on. Yeah, thanks. Um, so basically, the thing is... Um, the, the 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 thing about it is that I w- I would I would I you would sound ban- like you're, you sound like you're laughing there. Is someone tickling you? I have my wife. Is my she- wife she is tickling me. Is she tickling you? Yeah. All right, my wife my wife's tickling me and I'll tell you the reason why she's tickling me. It's because you know, I told her that women should be not banned from driving, but they should have pink dodgems. So everyone knows there's a woman driving. You know, you'd be able to spot them a mile off. Look, there's a pink dodgem. Look, there's a pink dodgem. And all the women would drive in the pink dodgem. I think it's a brilliant idea. And that way, there'd be less accidents on the road. I saw a woman trying to... Oh, she's tickling me again. And now, I saw a woman on the road trying to, to, to park in a space. It took her about 22 goals, backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. And well, then uh, how do you forwards. not know, how do you not know, right, she was doing that for your entertainment? She might be able to park perfectly well, but she there saw about, you looking. There was about ten people and she, stood she saw the you park looking. She saw you looking and probably thought to herself, who's that no. arsehole looking at me? Let's give him a bit of entertainment. It might have been no. like that. Is it? You, you, Chris, Chris, 
you you've been behind a woman driver before when she's or beside you know we pick our noses maybe but you've sit, you've been in the car and seen a woman put on her makeup haven't you in the car i have Be i have seen that and i have seen people picking their noses and quite honestly i'd rather see someone putting on their makeup while driving along the road at 95 miles an hour being flashed by all the speed cameras rather than seeing you pick your nose no, you you're dirty pull, bastard you're pulling my leg because if i pick my nose with Sheila in the car I give a quick little pick and I flick it oh flick dear it. me I bet you're that one that sits in public conveniences and wipes it on the wall as well aren't you? you're that man aren't you I know you are well as a kid I used to put it on the wall and, and I made a little mosaic right, of Chris, the bogey. Chris, yeah, in, Chris in Washington wants to know what if a woman Picks are your your views on this, please. What if a woman picks her nose, okay, and mm. puts her makeup on at the same time? How do you feel about that? Well, this is possible. Who, what's his name? Who asked that? Chris in Washington. Chris in Washington. You address that question. Will you please well, speak okay. into the phone, dear? You keep waving it around all over the place, dear, while you're trying not to laugh. Okay, basically, Chris in Washington. Hello, I'll, Guppy. I'll, call, I'll call you Christopher in the UK and then Chris in Washington. Thank you. Women would be able to do both because they possess a talent which, which men don't, and that's multitasking. So it is conceivable that a woman could perhaps put on her makeup and, and pick her nose at the same time. However, as Sheila's reminding me next to me, as she's tickling me, <laughs> um, she, 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 women don't pick their noses in public. So, so basically, in the UK, that is. I don't know the rules and regulations in Washington, um, but in the UK, um, I think that if we got rid of the cyclists, if we got rid of the women, the world, uh, you know, going back to the, the 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 thing about women and men, Chris, name me the top three women chefs in the world. You're going to say Delia Smith. From Delia 19- Smith's first one. Um, who was the old one years and years ago? Fanny Craddock. Oh. Fanny, uh, don't talk about your Fanny Craddock. Fanny Craddock, and who's the other one? Oh, yeah, um, Lord, yeah the old lady uh, who's on at the moment, Mary Berry. Yeah, but, but okay, top three women hairdressers in the world. Oh, my niece, Tracy Clifford. <laughs> Who? Tracy Clifford, my niece. Oh, your niece. Oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> Look, we all know men are superior to women. However, women <laughs> do have their uses. Don't get me wrong. Sheila makes a lovely apple crumble. Who's Sheila? Is that your wife? That's my wife. Oh, is she able to multicast tasks like she can cook a dinner and hoover the um hoover the hoover the floor? Yeah, well, uh, at the clean moment, out the fish tank, empty me. the cat tray. Can she do all those things at once uh, while yep. shouting at you for doing something wrong at the same time? Well, at the moment, Chris, she's actually cutting me up a mango while tickling me. So there you go. That answers your question in one. Wow. That's she's impressive. Cutting a, she's cutting a mango, which if you've ever cut a mango, it's, it's not easy to do in bed. Yeah. And basically, she's tickling my sides, which is why I was laughing before. Oh, is that why you were laughing? You weren't trying well, to, like, talk to, and... I've got to go now, because those grapes are not going to eat themselves. Right, OK. Thanks for calling in, Anne. It's lovely to talk to you, as always. God bless you. Cheerio. Love the show. <laughs> we're big fans in Manchester. I thought you were in Latvia. Take it easy. Bye, mate. <laughs> That's Ant. He does wonderful wind-up calls. He did a really good one the other week. Um, just touching on the subject of that cyclist business. Yes, indeed. Um, if you're not in the UK, you won't know about that. But there was an incident of uh, road rage this week. It was a road that I know very well because I used to live there um, until 1983. It's a very fast road. And... Basically, there was a cyclist on the side of the road. This car tried to overtake him. Maybe the cyclist moved out a little bit. And I saw two sides to this story, to be honest. And number one, you can't get out of a car and start screaming and shouting at a cyclist. Unless the cyclist has kicked the side of your car, which does happen. I've seen it happening. I've seen it happening. OK. But the thing is, on a lot of the roads now, they actually put cycle paths. 
The cycle path on this particular road is actually on the pavement. There is a little area of the pavement painted out for cyclists to go on. So why, oh why, do the cyclists go on, and I'm a cyclist as well, if there is a cycle route, I will use that. I will absolutely, because I'm safer on there. Right? Why is it that cyclists still insist on driving or cycling on the road when there is a cycle lane? Now, that's just idiotic. I mean, how stupid can you be to be given your own lane away from the traffic, and yet you prefer to cycle on the road. Now, there's a really good example of this in Vauxhall. There's a, a junction called Vauxhall Cross, right? And I drive over this junction uh, only once. I used to drive over there four times a week, only once a week now. OK, so there's a bridge first. So you cross over Vauxhall Bridge, right? There's a cycle lane on the road there. As you get over the bridge going to the south, so going from north to south, as you go over the bridge, where there it, it goes underneath a railway line above it, a railway bridge, OK? Evening, Kelly Kim. Before it goes... So, so the road goes under the railway bridge. Next to that is another arch. Now, they've put the cycle lane off the road and through the arch because that junction there is very difficult to come round. You get cars crossing into the wrong lane. Cars changing their mind at the last minute. So, for safety purposes, they put the cycle lane to go under the other arch on the left. If you, if you know London, you will know exactly where I mean now. So what do the cyclists do? They hardly use it. No, they prefer to squeeze on the inside of the cars trying to go under that bridge. And if and there is no cycle lane there, OK? Now, don't get me wrong, it is not illegal for them not to be in the cycle lane. But for their own safety, they've got this cycle lane and it comes off the road and goes under and under another arch. While the cars go under that arch, the cyclists are supposed to go under that arch, but it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. These idiots insist on driving or cycling under the same arch as the cars, and it is so dangerous for them. Why do they do it? I, I said to you, I'm a cyclist. I do not go through red lights. I know the dangers. And don't blame young people. Don't blame the young people. Little boys and girls are on bikes. Actually, when, when I'm on bikes, actually, when I watch them, generally, they stick to the rules. It's the middle-aged people like myself. You know, the lycra clad ones. What do they look like in that lycra? God's sake. <laughs> it's awful. Just awful. And I don't, don't, don't understand. It's, it's almost as if some of these cyclists want to die. So when you say about that altercation, I understand that there must be some reason he got out of that, that, that car and started screaming and shouting at that cyclist but they've got these little cameras on and they think they're in charge of the road, cyclists. Not all of them. Not me. Not plenty of other cyclists who do actually stick to the rules. We, I've seen cyclists standing at red lights, waiting for the light to go, when another cyclist goes tearing past and the one sitting at the lights are like shaking their head like that in disbelief. Uh, Kelly, Kelly Kim, who's with us uh, this evening, said, I nearly got run over by a cyclist going for a red light. I mean, how many times? Chris in Washington says older people have smaller bladders, so they bike faster to make to make it to the restroom in time. <laughs> Are you speaking about yourself there, Chris? <laughs> oh, we didn't know you had a weak bladder. We're not doing bladders today. We're not doing bladders today on this programme. Thank you. Dear me. Wendy. 
uh, in Leyland says, I must admit I got out of my car and told the cyclist off that shouted at me for no reason the other day. I wasn't taking his abuse on the chin. Good girl. Good girl. I've been in the car and a cyclist has come along the inside as they do all the time. And it's so dangerous. You've only got to turn that steering wheel slightly to the left and you've squashed them. And you know you'll get the blame, don't you? Not all night. It can't be the cyclist's fault. Oh, that poor precious thing. Got nothing surrounded him to protect him. Was not my problem. Get a car. Although, of course, you know, there's many people out there who couldn't afford a car. So that's why they've got a bike. But if you've got a bike, you know, you are not going to win a row with a lorry. Give way, you idiot. Even, even if the lorry is in the wrong. Give way or die. Simple. How stupid can you be to squeeze between cars? When there's three or four lanes, you see them. All the traffic's moving along and it's not got to be moving along that fast. To quickly steer that word slightly to the left, you're crushed. We've seen the videos on YouTube. Dead people. If you were dead and could come back alive, I bet you wouldn't do it a second time, would you? Mark says, what I find idiotic is the cycle zone at the front of the traffic lights. Like bikes take, bikes take off faster. Well, they do, didn't they? <laughs> What's all that about? And the cyclists, they squeeze along either in between the cars or to in, you know, on the left lane. They get to that cycle bit at the front of the and then they move into the middle of the lane and don't move over again. What the hell's that about? Yes, I can talk like this because I'm a cyclist. Idiots. They want to die. I'm telling you now, they want to die. There are a couple on YouTube who have got these cameras on their heads and they are bloody arrogant and aggressive. Really aggressive and arrogant to other people. You wouldn't mind, you know, sometimes maybe something might happen and they might shout at another car, but it's all the time. There's one particular one, really weird looking bloke. He's got glasses, um, he's got little round glasses and this thing on his hat and he looks a right, you know, he does. He looks at you. You, you, you think, oh, what an absolute idiot. But it's almost at every junction. He turns round and feels the necessary to tap on someone's window and say something. What planet are these people on? These cyclists. There was one where I, I was driving along through Putney in southwest London. And I spotted this cyclist and he was trying to squeeze down the left. And actually, I moved slightly to the right. And then he hit my mirror. He hit my mirror, bending it back. OK, it wasn't broken, but he just carried on. So I went after him. Oi! Oi! Completely ignored me. Completely ignored me. How old was he? I bet you're wondering that. About 60. About 60. Seriously. So there's our little bit of cyclist there. Um, Mark says there's so many more cyclists than a few years ago. Soon London will be car free. Yeah, well, that's the old Boris bike. For oh, my God. Have you seen them on the Boris bikes? They can't even ride them, dear. <laughs> they can't even ride them. Now, uh, someone's sending me. Oh, uh, Ben says, I bet these kamikaze cyclists have National Accident Helpline on speed dial. Oh, of course they do. Ben's got his cycling proficiency badge. Oh, you'll have to wear that next time I see you, Ben. <laughs> Terry H has gone to bed. Good night, Terry. Oh, he went to bed about 20 minutes ago. Good night, Terry. Terry H there. Uh, Brandon says, um, you can't, on the, on, the, on the phone call we had, you can't discriminate against women drivers. Lots of women that can drive properly. What about ambulance and police female drivers? Absolutely, yes. Women drivers are, are, are just as good, I think, as, um, as, uh, as, uh, as, as us, to be honest. I really do think that. Um, there are bad women drivers, as indeed there are bad men drivers, you know. I mean, I, I consider my bed, best mate a terrible driver. I really do. Too fast and all that business. Mark's got his gold swimming badge. Do you remember Mr. Allison at swimming, Mark? He was a dodgy one. <laughs> I'm never quite sure about him. 
<laughs> oh dear me. So that's that's the thing about um uh uh cycling and all that as brought up by um Ant who called in there. Now, um someone's just said to me I need to sing a congratulations song to Kelly Kim. Why is that please? Why have we got to do that? What's what's Kelly Kim done? Has she done something? Do let me know. Must have done something. <laughs> Come on. Have you been promoted? Oh, OK, then. Congratulations and celebrations when I tell everyone that you're in love with me. All right, Kelly Kim. Congrats, darling. Uh, Leo says bikes have just as much right on the road as cars. Yes, indeed, they have. They, you're right, Leo. They have as much right on the road as cars. But if you're giving a cyclist a safe route to go down... Why, oh why, would you want to go on the dangerous route where you can be crossed against the wall going under that tunnel at Vauxhall? It's mad. Mark says on the subject of bikes, pay bike tax then. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about that. Bike tax. See, the thing is, and someone mentioned this the other night, there are people out there who can't afford cars. They can't even afford bus fares, but they've got a bike. You know, what are they going to do if you have to pay tax? I mean, it's, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Righto. Now, let's have a look here. I've got some other little stories here to tell you. Um, where are we now? Barbie. Who had a Barbie doll? Wendy, did you have a Barbie doll? I reckon Ant had a Barbie doll. Did you have a Barbie doll? Well, listen to this. I mean, this is this is shock horror news. We don't like it when they change things, do we? I hate it when things are changed all the time. Right? In the Daily Mail today, Barbie is finally kicking off her heels. When he had Ken. <laughs> Ken was the equivalent of Barbie. We always thought Ken was gay. I mean, he looked gay, didn't he? How was he supposed to be Barbie's husband when he looked gay? Mind you, I was someone's husband once, believe it or not. I know you'll find that hard to believe. Um, it says, she spent decades tottering around on sky-high heels, but now for the first time in more than five decades, much-loved doll Barbie will be able to kick off her stilettos and opt for a pair of comfy flats. <laughs> Mattel, the toy company behind the figurine, um, has announced the launch of a new version, which will, for the first time, feature adjustable ankles that will allow her to wear either a high heel or flats. <laughs> Frumpy flats. I mean, come on. Kelly Kim, I can't see you dressed like that, darling. Perhaps her feet are tired. I just don't see Barbie, you know. I see Barbie as like um, a glamorous thing. You wouldn't expect her to have that, would you? Chris in Washington says, I had a Betty doll. She had three legs and one arm. Guess it was cheaper for my parents to buy. <laughs> ben says, has Barbie gone lesbian? Quite po has, has Barbie gone lesbian? Quite possibly. But I know lots of lesbian friends of mine have got high heels, actually. And a few of the blokes have as well. I tried high heel once when I was at a fancy dress. Oh, my God. How on earth do people wear those? Ant says the most realistic doll I bought was wearing no shoes at all and had realistic hair. Stop it, Ant. Stop it. Did you order it mail online? Mail order, was it? Kelly Kim says, I'd love to drag you up, Chris. I'll let you do that one day, Kelly. Promise, OK? Don't know when, don't know where, but I know we'll meet again some sunny day. You can't have Barbie dressing down, can you? Hasn't she got to wear heels and look glamorous like Kelly Kim does? Kelly Kim is um, one of the people that come to my karaoke nights often. It's our last one this week at the Cherry Tree. Oh, how sad is that? We got, a, we got one. I don't know if anyone's around the southeast London area, 
on Sunday night this week. We've got our last do at the Cherry Tree. Um, oh, did I see the Channel 4 programme? People dressing up at hum- as human dolls. Yes, I did. That was odd. That was odd. Were you in it, And You seem like the sort of person that would be in that, I reckon. I, I reckon Ant would do something. He's the sort of person that would do something like that. You know, he comes on here with all his jokes, sending all these joke messages and all that. You know, most of the time it's about him. Ant is probably actually a woman driver who picks his nose and puts makeup on and can multitask at all things at the same time while wearing, uh, uh, while, while dressing up as a doll. I reckon that's probably Ant. I mean, you know, I am getting a picture of you now, Ant, really, to be honest. You can't have Barbie in flats. The story goes on. Um, the new Barbie already has a wardrobe of flat shoes to choose from. What was the other doll? They had Barbie. There was another one, wasn't there? What was the other one? Barbie... Oh, gosh, there was another... Cindy, thank you. What happened to her? Is she dead, Cindy? I haven't heard from her for a long time. Cindy must be... Shania, what are you still doing up? It's quarter past 12. Go to bed, you've got school tomorrow, dear. Poor old Cindy, she must be dead. (laughs) Killed by a cyclist. (laughs) Oh, poor Cindy. She was always like the poor sister of Barbie, wasn't she? <laughs> Cindy. Ben says he's got a pair of uh, six-inch stilettos. I've got them to do a frankfurter. <laughs> poor old Barbie. I, don't, I hate it when they start changing things, don't you? Oh, it's it. it why do they... Ch- My mum used to say that. She would sit there saying, why do they have to change things all the time? And now I don't, I don't like things changed. You know, look how bad television is now that we've got all these channels. When me and Mark was at the London Oratory School, there were only five, three channels. Uh, BBC One, BBC Two and um, ITV. The Cherry Tree ends this, su- this coming Sunday. OK, now the Cherry Tree is in a road called Grove Vale in East Dulwich. It's very, very close to the East Dulwich train station, like 30 seconds away, okay? And um, we do a karaoke quiz night there on Sundays. It's the last one this week, and we knew this was coming because the people that own it have um, sold the pub, and they've asked me to go with them to their new place, which is in in Sydenham. Now, Admittedly, I've done a couple there on Fridays and Saturdays and they haven't really worked out too well there. However, we are moving the whole Sunday thing there. Sydenham, I gather, is about 15 minutes from from East Dulwich and I'm pretty sure that not everyone will go down there. What will happen? Who knows? Who knows? I'm sorry, I've got this incredibly itchy nose again. Oh, I asked the doctor about me itchy nose. Hay fever, apparently. And he's given me this cream again. It's nearer to London Bridge. What, Sydenham? I don't know about that. Is it? You could. I mean, Sydenham isn't near London Bridge, is it? Is it near? I wouldn't have said it was that near to there. I think you should look that up on a map. Oh, it's better track. What, to Sydenham is better transport? I'm going to have to blow my nose. No tissue. Oh, um, hang on a minute. I'll have to go and get one. Sorry. Back in a second. Talk amongst yourselves for a second. There we are, that's better. Sorry, I get incredibly itchy nose. A doctor says it's hay fever. That's why I'm getting itchy nose and itchy knees. Uh, itchy ears, rather. So there we are. Suspense, that was it. Oh, do you, would you like a live blowing off the nose as well? <laughs> There you go. How's that? <laughs> no point in blowing that nose. So that's on Sunday night, uh, this Sunday night. So that's the um, that's the 7th of June. Sunday night, the 7th of June. Uh, the Cherry Tree, East Dulwich. <coughs> <coughs> uh, 7 till 12. Last one this week, okay? 
Right. Um, Anne wants to know, do I do any karaoke's in North London? Yes, indeed, I do um, two. Uh, the one you're like will be at the Golden Lion on Tuesday nights, 9 till 12. The Golden Lion, Royal College Street in Camden Town. OK. Okie doke. Um, let's have a look there. Johnny Key sends uh, an email in and uh, says, he does, how do you keep it up, Chris? Are you <coughs> the Duracell bunny? He wants to know that because I'm able to do like karaoke and quiz nights and DJing and do these shows as well. You've got to keep going, you know. Don't ever let your mind go blank, otherwise it's all over, I'm afraid. It will all be over very, very quickly if that. I had some very sad news today. Um, I found a picture on the internet which shows the black cap boarded up. You ready for this? Look at that. The boards are going up on the black cap. That That is really sad. I don't know if you saw our black cap special programmes. Oh, about, about six weeks ago now it was, I think. And it's a place I worked at for 18 years. Some great memories there and some bad ones as well, it has to say. But it really was part of my life, the black cap. Um, between 1989 and 2007. And I popped back there again in 2013 for a little while. And it's gone. And now it's being bought, it was, it's being boarded up today. It closed a while ago. I did pop down there. Um, last Tuesday, I think it was, I, I did a little periscope from there. And um, it's just sad, sad. So I just wanted to share that with you there. It looks like they're boarding up. I gather they can't do anything in there, though, at the moment. They're not allowed to do anything in there. Something to do, I, I, I'm not quite sure. There's so many different stories going on there that, that we don't know what it is. Now, um, <clears throat> Terry. I don't know if Terry Turner is still with us. He wanted to know <clears throat> how I'm getting the sound. Yes, I know Chris. I know Chris. I do know Chris. Yes, indeed, Mark. Now, you haven't sent me an email yet with your phone number. Don't you want to talk to me, Mark? Not on the show. In private, maybe tomorrow. Send me your phone number. Email chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, OK? Uh, Terry wanted to know about this wire here. This is the special wire. Terry? Sorry, going to be technical here, just for a second or two. It's got an attenuator in it. Right, send me your phone number. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Tell me what time you want me to ring you tomorrow and we'll have a chat, OK? Uh, this, this, um, oh, Gavin, you're there as well. Good. Gavin, could you tell Terry this? He wanted to know about this cable. So this is an attenuating cable. I take an output from my mixer, plug it into this, and that plugs into the bottom of my iPhone 5S, OK? And it carries the signal directly from the mixer into the phone. That's how I'm doing this with the periscope now, right? So the so it's coming straight in there rather than the little microphone on, on the camera. So it works a lot better. Um so that came today. Um I've got I've got to tell you this. It was twenty-eight dollars, so tw about twenty twenty pounds, which is a bit expensive for a small bit of wire. But you can't get these anywhere else. I looked for these in the UK. Couldn't find them anyway. They are a special lead. You can't just plug a microphone straight into your iPhone. Doesn't work. You've got to have this special lead, right? This, incidentally, is a different lead to the one I showed you a couple of weeks ago, which was indeed to plug a microphone straight in. This is to plug the mixer straight in. Two different, completely different leads. Right, so this came in the post. And there was, yesterday, there was a little note in my letterbox Saying that, oh, we couldn't deliver something to you today because there is a charge to pay, right, from customs. OK, so on a lead that's cost me 25, about 20 pounds. How much do you think the customs charge was on that? Right. Eleven pounds, 78 pence. And I thought that's a bit dear for a tax, isn't it? That's like a, a 40 percent tax. So I went down there. I wish I'd kept the envelope with me today. And, yeah, £11.75. 
What did I say? Eleven, okay, eleven pounds seventy-eight. Eleven pounds seventy-eight tax on an item that had only cost twenty-three, twenty, twenty quid. So I've got the the envelope, and on the back is a little label that says um, customs charge. Okay, which seems more like it was just a bit under three pounds. But then the post office charged an eight pounds. Handling free fee. And that's outrageous. Yeah, from the US. Absolutely outrageous. Eight pounds post office handling fee. The tax was only three quid, which is acceptable. That's about sounds about right to me. Eight pounds post office. So what do they do for that? One bloke hands it to another and then they give it to you. Eight quid, please. Thieving bastards. Thieving bastards. Ant says, I've never seen you so furious. I'm not that bad. I tell you what, I was furious once a while ago, Ant, going back to landlords and things like that, okay? The house up north, each month you get a statement. Oh, Wendy says, ah, Wendy says the Manilow girls, they're they're Manilow, Barry Manilow fans, have had problems with custom charges when ordering merchandise from the store in the US. I don't think it's so much of the customs charge... It's it's the charge that the post office put. I I don't have any problem with paying an extra three pound um, for tax, right? But I have a problem paying eight pounds handling fee from the post office. That's outrageous. But then the post office have got extremely expensive lately. We I used to have a post office box, you know, United Kingdom talk PO box whatever it was. Bracknell, Berkshire, post office. Okay? And I had this for about three years. And then one year, the price doubled. Almost. The price of this post office box almost, I'm sorry, cancelled it straight away. And, you know, bad businessmen as they are, they didn't come back and say, oh, well, um, okay, would you be happy to pay this? Oh, no, they just let you go. Bad business. Bad, bad business. How can you double the cost of something overnight? Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. For the amount of mail, and people like Millie, they said, oh, can you not keep it open? We can't send you anything. You know, for the sake of receiving, I don't know, five packages a year. A ma- oh, OK, a maximum of eight items of post, whether packages or, or letters a year. For the sake of eight, so that would have worked out to about 30 quid per item for me. It's just not worth having it, is it? So you might as well not have it. Fortunately, I've got a pub that I work at who's quite happy to have anything that I need for the show delivered there, which is uh, very fortunate. Very fortunate to have something like that. So eight pounds handling charge. I don't know how they get around on that. I really don't. Um, they are taking the mick, though, so nothing you can do. But the wire's in place, so that's what works there, OK? Uh, let's have a look here. Right, we've got some more stories here, boys and girls. Now, look at this. Look at this. Do you remember Concord? You remember Concord? You do, don't you? That is the supersonic plane. As produced jointly by the British and French... That flew our wondrous skies for years before one of them blew up. Uh, I think it was something got sucked into one of the engines that had been left accidentally on the runway. Perhaps a piece of rubber or something like that. The actual plane themselves did not blow up on its own. But if I remember, it's it's a while ago now, I think people were killed and it was awful. It was absolutely awful. Anyway, it was taken out of service a few years ago. Now, I have to tell you, the Concorde flight path went right over my house. Every morning at 11 o'clock and every night at 7 o'clock, it would go roaring over my house. I mean roaring. (laughs) And you could you could feel it shake the place. I loved it. People say, oh, oh, noisy plane. Oh, I bet you're glad that stopped. No, not at all. 
that was a wonderful, wonderful piece of British and French engineering. The plane didn't go wrong. Oh, it used to fly over Pimlico as well, where Mark lived. Really? Gosh. I loved it. I loved it. The takeoff, argh, as it come up. It, sometimes it woke me up at 11 o'clock. That's when I used to go raving at the weekend and I'd be in bed on a Monday and be woken up by this thing going. I loved it. And I miss that so much. Of course it's quieter. Yes, it is. I love it. Oh, wow. Mark flew on one to New York. Wendy said it flew over Manchester a few times. It was beautiful to see this thing going across. Beautiful piece of engineering. And because of the accident, they stopped them all flying, never to come back again. British Airways, I think it was more to do with money. They were losing an awful lot of money. It never made any money. Anyway, good news is possibly around the corner. In today's Daily Mail, the Sun of Concord is coming. NASA reveals a $2.3 million plan to help a new generation of supersonic planes take flight. The money will be spent on eight research projects addressing technical challenges of supersonic flight. I suppose one of the technical things, uh, th this, this plane actually used to stretch, didn't it? While it was flying, it got so hot that the metal would expand. They must have some very clever people working on this stuff, don't you think? You know, to, to, to work out, you know, how do they work out what to do with it? It saves jet lag. How long did it used to take to fly to New York? Was it two hours or something ridiculously stupid like that? Um, we have a museum near here. Now, what's it called? Brooklands. I think it's Brooklands Museum. And I did go there um, last year with um, some family, some extended family, uncles and cousins. Uh, one of my cousins who's, who bought his children. Was it three and a half hours? OK, three and a half hours to get to New York, roughly. Uh, they came over. My, my cousin lives in Abu Dhabi. He's very high up in, in a bank there. And he brought his family over. When do you remember seeing the photos? Yeah, they were great photos. And I actually went. They have an old Concorde there. And I went up there. And, do you know, I don't think I would have liked it on there. It's, it's very, very narrow and very long. Um, you know, first class all the way. There, there is no economy seats. First class all the way. And you could see in the in the engine room, and I have to say, it looked really old-fashioned. There were little pipes going everywhere and illuminated dolls and things like that. And we sat down and we had this little presentation in front of us. It's, it's a wonderful place to go. They've got all sorts of stuff there, planes, uh, buses, a, a really good day out. If you, if you want to go there, either with... I, I would say you don't need children to go to this one. There's plenty... If you wanted to go on your own as an adult, great place to go. Brooklyn's Museum, which I think is... I think it's Weybridge or somewhere near that. It's in Surrey anyway, OK? It's a really good day out. They've got old buses and things, all like transport things there. Motorbikes. Do you like motorbikes? They've got loads of those there. <coughs> Um, and we got on this Concorde and we're sitting there having this thing and they say when it goes just before it goes into there's a hotel near the track is there? okay I don't know about that um, just before it used to go into uh, supersonic mode that the pilot apparently would come on and say okay you're going to feel a slight jerk now as we go into supersonic and apparently it would flick a switch and it would be like a little jerk and then you'd be going supersonic and there would be a sign on there saying Mac 2, Mac 3, Mac 4, however fast it used to go. Wonderful. Would I like to have gone on it? I'd like to fly at that speed. But it, it, it was really enclosed, you know, it, it was a, it was just like being on, on a very narrow tube. So I don't think I would have liked that. Um, back to the story in the... Uh, Wendy would like to have gone on it. Yeah, well, Mark did. A couple of my friends went on it. The story in the Daily Mail says, uh, on October the 24th, 2003, so that's three, four, 12 years ago it was, the last flight of the Concorde came to an end. And with it, the promise that supersonic travel could transform the aviation industry. Because we, we all thought we were going to... Um, no legroom. Oh, no, Mark. 
I don't do no leg room on planes anymore. I, I save up the money and we go in the nice seats. You know the ones with a button that you push down and you lie flat? Have you been in those, Mark? I'm sure you have, dear. I'm sure you fly like that, Mark. By the way, Mark, what job do you do now? I want to know. Um, it says, now that more than a decade on, NASA is hoping to revive the dream of supersonic planes um, with... Uh, a load of funding for research products. We all thought, you know, that the, there was going to be more and more supersonic planes, but there never was. It started and finished with Concorde. Now it's a minimum of eight hours to get to New York. Isn't it? The money will be spent on eight different research projects, each aimed to address technical challenges, such as the impact of supersonic cruise aircraft in the stratosphere and noise reduction for the aircraft. You don't sort of think about those things, do you? you know, um, The fact that a plane up there, what damage could that do? Anne says, I went club class to America last year. Don't think I can fly economy anymore. No, you, you can't. Believe me, you can't. Um, <clears throat> I've been to Australia five times. The first time I did it like that, I, I was just amazed at the difference. Totally amazed. There are now double-decker planes to take more people at cheaper prices. Look at the A380. I haven't been on a, on a, um, a, a Airbus A380 yet. I really want to go on one of those. Next time I go on a long trip, it'll hopefully be on an A380. I'm hoping to go next year on one, actually. I don't know where to yet. I might go back to Australia again. I saw, funnily enough, yesterday, while I was driving on the M4, the Qantas A380 flew across. And those ones are... Um, those... Those A380s... They, they seem to have to go right to the end of the runway before they take off because they're huge things. Right, so when they take off over the motorway, they're low. Whereas the smaller planes, they were, they're already high up because they've taken off earlier. These ones go, they must go to the end of the runway before they can take off. And they're massive, massive things. Massive things. Um, ben says you're forgetting the TU-144 or Konkordski. What's that then, Ben? I don't know what you're talking about there. Is that another plane there, is it? Mark says it's incredible how they can even take off. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But it's interesting what this article's saying. You know, you, you actually don't think, you know, apart from of, of, for obvious things, you know, the fuel creating more carbon emissions. You know, what, what do, do these supersonic planes, do they go out of the atmosphere and come back down again? I don't know. Um, what they want to do is lessen the sonic boom. Well, I mean, I used to hear that. and it's, I, I love the noise. I absolutely love the noise. Other barriers uh, include high altitude emissions, fuel efficiency and community noise around airports. Well, we've always got that. The article goes on to say supersonic could be superseded by something even faster. They're saying Mac 2.5 is about the speed limit for gas turbine engines. They can't get them to go any farther. Any faster and the temperature and pressure of air entering the engine is too high for the turbo machinery inside. To fly at hypersonic speed, Mach 5 and above, requires a different type of engine. Um, and it, it goes on with technical stuff, which, which I don't understand. Um, I think a lot of... Things like aircraft and all that, you know, going at very fast speeds. Um, I think a lot of that is probably driven by the defence industry. You know, how fast can we get a bomb from A to B, basically? You know? I think it's probably driven a lot by the defence industry, something like that. And then the commercial industry, oh, you can get a bomb for, to go that fast. Maybe we can get passengers to go a little bit faster. And that's how a lot of this stuff comes around, defence and what have you like that. Uh, Ben's just sending me something through here. Oh, OK. I, I, I've not, uh, apparently the Konkordsky uh, was the Russian version of Concord. Let's see. He's just sent me a little wiki, Wikipedia thing. Oh, it's, uh, that's ugly. 
I can't, unfortunately, I can't show that to you. Um, if you type into, those of you on the computer, Tupoli, T-U-P-O-L-E-Y, space, T-U-144, you should get a picture of this Russian plane, which I suppose, here we go, the Tupo, Tupolev is a retired jet airliner, airliner, which was the world's first commercial subsonic, supersonic transport aircraft. <coughs> and it's Russian. Don't look as good as our Concorde, though. <laughs> Not at all. So there we are, a little bit about the old uh, supersonic planes there. I hope they do it again. I mean, it, it does make sense, doesn't it, really? We've got to move on. How can, it, how can we still be taking eight hours now to get to America? 20 years later, it's still taking eight hours. In, I think it's California, someone's building... Oh, cruises. I've done a cruise. Yeah, I've done a cruise on a boat. That's quite relaxing. Oh, you have so much to eat. If you ever go on a cruise, I highly recommend you lose weight before you go on there. Because you'll certainly put it on while you're there. You do nothing but eat on one of those cruise ships. Terrible. Terrible. Anyone else want to call in tonight? We've got Skype, United Kingdom Talk, all one word, United Kingdom Talk. And we've got a phone number, 020-8144-3477, okay? 020 8144 Can I just tell you, next Wednesday night, um, I'm, I'm out, I'm doing a quiz at a place in Islington called the King's Head Theatre Pub. That's at 8.30 next Wednesday if you want to come along to that one, okay? Another story here. What do you think about this one? We were talking about cameras earlier. There's no songs today, I'm afraid, Ant. We don't do songs on YouTube. Metropolitan officers to get 20,000 body cameras. We were talking about these cameras earlier, weren't we? Plans to equip on the BBC website all Met police officers with cameras on their uniforms have been announced by the Mayor of London. It's our Boris. Ah, Boris. Chris, the Wednesday show is not a regular thing, I'm afraid. It's when I can fit it in, right? Officers across 10 London boroughs are currently involved in a trial using about a 1,000 cameras to boost transparency and speed up convictions. The trial started in May last year, has seen about 6,000 videos uploaded each month with participating officers saying the cameras demonstrated they could reduce complaints and increase the number of early Guilty, please. So it's it's another example, isn't it? Of us being watched all the time. We've got the cameras in the towns. We've got the cameras on the road. They're everywhere. Cameras are everywhere. Do you like it? I mean, people often talk about police brutality. And I'm sure there's probably one or two officers who don't stick to the law. But the majority of them are good people, aren't they? Looking after us. Don't you think? They must be, surely. Is it like the live version of Big Brother, isn't it, Joey? The general version of Big Brother that's on, on us all, all the time. Mark says it's because only 20,000 cop coppers walk the beat in the UK. Ant says, I was horrified that your iPhone tracks exactly where you go all the time. Yeah, if unless you switch off. I turned that off. I, tu I found that as well. I've turned mine off straight away. So what do you think about that? Police having cameras all the time. Good or bad? We've seen... We've seen... Police cameras used on those prang programs on this early. Police camera action. And you've seen what stupid people are. And you see, once you get in the courtroom, it's the policeman's word against the other. If they've got this evidence, perhaps they can lock these little toe rags up. You know, I've never been hauled before a court for anything other than other than running a pirate radio station in the 80s, I, I, I did that and I got done for that. But it wasn't a police thing anyway. It wasn't a police thing. 
it protects innocent folk, doesn't it? Having cameras. Why should you be worried about a policeman having a camera? Are you doing something wrong, perhaps? Is that indeed any different in the cameras all over town and on the roads? Is there any difference? If you're not doing anything wrong, why should you worry? I personally don't like being filmed all over the place. I know that sounds stupid when I'm sit here daily talking to you through one method or another. I love it. I love talking to you. But I turn the camera off when I've had enough or at the end of a show. Some see it as an invasion of frizzy, Mark says. Chris says, if I pick my nose, I do it when no one's looking. But if everyone has a camera, I can't pick. Yes, I agree. I do behave myself, Wendy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like the idea that I'm filmed all over the place. Does it make us safer? Now, that's the thing. Does it make us safer? Because, again, we've heard of incidents where... People are have something happen, perhaps robbed, mugged, whatever. Oh, you will have it on CCTV? Oh, the camera wasn't switched on. How many times have we heard that? So are we actually safer? And yet, if you go three miles an hour over the limit, that camera will get you. It is never switched off. Why is it? When people are murdered, mugged, whatever. Oh, if you got oh the camera wasn't switched on. Funny that, isn't it? It's like they can't be bothered. I actually go along a hundred percent with with police officers having cameras. They're only going to arrest you if you're doing something bad, aren't they? Interesting from Mark, if cyclists have pro cams, why not the police? Yeah, absolutely. And that's the funny thing going back to the cyclists again, Mark, right? They upload these videos of them having goes at people. And actually, I don't think the cyclists, some of the time, are doing themselves any favour uploading their aggressive attitude towards not only the drivers, but the pedestrians and everyone around them, including other cyclists. Where does that aggression come from on cyclists? I, I, I really do think that police should have cameras. But you see, it's not going to stop there. Already today, and on a couple of occasions... As I mentioned right at the beginning of the show, I've had my iPhone turned around right, with the camera on this side hanging around my neck filming. There are people walking around with Google Glass. I know of one. And he films a lot of stuff all the time. You don't know. How do you know if that camera's on or not? Have you ever been in a restaurant somewhere? Sitting there with a few friends, got all these phones on the table. Anyone recording you? No? How do you know? Has a, a little video or audio clip, or both, of you or your friends ever ended up on YouTube and you didn't know it was being taken? This can only get worse, especially with the likes of Periscope. People are recording you all the time and you don't even know it. But I don't think we can go backwards. You, you, you can't uninvent easy ways to record, can you? Yes, Mark, you're quite right with that. I shan't comment on that. But if you look for Jordan's um, husband, that's a really good one. 
<laughs> oh, I've watched that one several times. <laughs> What's his name? Kieran, isn't it? <laughs> and says, some nutter se secretly recorded stitches has been taken. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. People are being recorded all the time. You don't know anything about it. But when people complain, say, oh, oh, you can't... Here, the, the whole school's business, the whole school's business, right? You go to your child, nephew, niece, your child, um, uh, school, concert, sports day, whatever, school outing. Don't even think about trying to take pictures of your child. Oh, my child's in that as well. They were in the background. Are you taking pictures of my child? No, I'm not taking pictures of your bloody child. Taking pictures of my own child. Have you forgotten when you complain like that about all the other cameras that are filming you all over the place? What planet are you on? What planet are these teachers on? There was one case. Oh, I love this one. There was one case, right, where apparently, I've read this in a paper a couple of years ago, Christmas nativity. Someone's taking photos. Head teacher comes up. I'm sorry, we can't allow you to take photos in here. Why not? The other the parents complain. OK, two days later, they could buy a picture of all the children together in one big thing from the school. So how does that work? How does that work? You can't take pictures, but you can buy one later. Hypocrites, hypocrites. Absolute hypocrites. Idiots. Oh, you're not taking pictures of my kids. We don't want pictures of your kids. We want pictures of the collective. I've got a couple of pictures from me in the primary school with all the other children. And I look at it. Oh, I remember him. I remember him. Remember him. Remember her. Remember her. Oh, that's my teacher. Miss Raybone. She was a wonderful teacher. Miss, I had two favourite teachers in primary school, Miss Raybone and Miss Eaton. Nice people. So are we saying now that, you know, when you're older, you won't have those pictures because someone has disallowed them? Because they think we're all perverts out here. And yet these same children with their parents are walking quite happily through shopping centres, being filmed left, right and centre. How do you know who's watching on those cameras? Go on, go on, say it. Oh, they've been checked by SRV or something something, something about that. The Miller Sisters. The Miller Sisters. What was her name? I remember the Miller Sisters at the Oratory. Yeah, that was, at, that was my school, London Oratory. Same one as Mark went to. It was in my year as well. <laughs> Um, ben says, you know why Iceland chose Peter Andre to do their adverts? He is known for going for cheap prices. Very good. Boom, boom. <laughs> Anyone else want to call in? You've only got another five minutes. Brandon, the security guards in Whitgift Centre Croydon have body cameras. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that, really. I don't really have a problem with police having cameras at all. I think it's, I think it's probably a good thing. I don't like all these cameras all over the place filming me left, right and centre. But on the other hand, you know, I don't worry too much. Mike, I'm so sorry, Mike. Oh, I haven't been checking the emails. Mike uh, in Brighton has sent in a few emails. Um, no, don't you dare, Mark. Uh, Mike says, sorry I haven't tuned in for a while. Hope you're well. You're looking dashing tonight. Love a blazer and open shirt. How far do you want me to open it, Mike? <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Uh, Mike says, it's very sad about the black cap. That's where we met. Actually, Mike, I don't know if you're still with us at the moment. I, I do remember. I do actually remember the first time I met you. And you were sitting on a stool when we had the front part and the back part of the black cap. You were, and I came in and you said, are you Chris? Yeah, hello. Yeah, and that was it. And we said hello and you sat on that stool. I remember. I can see you actually sitting on that stool now, Mike. Mike, if you're still there with us. I'm sorry, I, I know you sent this half an hour ago. Um, Mike loves the new mirror ball. Yes, that is a new mirror ball there. Because the other one had bits missing from it. And Mike pointed that out. And I was so distraught that Mike pointed out the fact that there were bits of mirror missing from the mirror ball that I had to go out and buy a new one. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, dear. <clears throat> Got your emails. Are you still with us, Mike? You might have disappeared by now. I'm sorry I didn't didn't pick this up earlier, OK? Um, I've got, I've got to share this with you. Got to share this with you, right? I got sent today. And I'm sorry, those of you in Periscope can't see this. I got sent today a little picture um, from my nephew's wife, Stacy. They've recently had a little baby girl called Olivia. I I don't know why I have great trouble saying that name. I I keep saying. Olivia. Wendy, is that you sending all those arts? What's that? You, you'll have a repetitive strain injury, dear. <laughs> on Periscope, where some people are watching, they can send love hearts if they like what's going on by double tapping the screen. <laughs> Ant says only 500 get registered. No, don't say... You're only saying that, Ant, because I'm going to have more than you eventually. <laughs> Well, does it, is it is it beneficial to have loads of hearts? I don't know. It's nice. It's nice. I don't know if it's beneficial or not. It'll make any difference to me? But thank you for sending them anyway. Mark, let us know if you're still there. Um, so Wendy sent uh, uh, my my nephew's wife sent me this. You ready for this? Look at this. And it's a it's a picture of my great niece Olivia. And there's a note there, and it says, will you be my godfather? Isn't that a lovely thing? Sorry, as I say, you can't see that on on um, Periscope, but I, I haven't got the picture printed off. And I was so touched by that, really, really touched by that little thing that she sent me there. Isn't that nice? Of course I said yes. People were saying to me, what did you say? Well, what do you think I said? I said, yes, straight away. Because I've got a christening going on in uh, about a month's time, so I'm going up there. Funnily enough, exactly coinciding with my Saturday night off. So the christening's on the Sunday, the Saturday night, and, and that's great. Uh, Chris says you should have Godfather music playing on Saturday's show. Do you reckon? <laughs> that could be a good idea, that. Could be a good idea. Well, that's it today, boys and girls. Thank you very, very much uh, for joining us on the show. A two-hour show we've done today, haven't we? I, was only, I, was only, I thought I'd only do an hour. Um, yes, hope you've enjoyed the show today and we've had a bit of a chat. Don't forget, once again, you can join me on Periscope. My Periscope username is Chris Reardon UK. What is Periscope? It's a little app for the iPhone and it's also available on Android as well. No, download it completely free of charge and add me, uh, Chris Reardon UK, if you want to. I do lots of little shows. Some of them are all different ones. Um, funny things. You never know. I never know. I don't sit here planning Periscopes. They just happen. That's the big difference between YouTube and Periscope. The YouTube ones are a little bit more planned. They are they are actually planned, okay? But often don't stick to the plans. We go in a completely different direction. That doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, Wendy likes the photo as well. Doesn't matter. But the Periscope ones are certainly not not planned at all. I just think, oh, let's do that now and start it off. Generally, there's one in the morning and one in the afternoon. All right, have a lovely Wednesday evening. Sleep tight, everyone. Thanks for joining in. If you want to send us an email, my email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Next live show here on YouTube will be on Saturday afternoon at 12 o'clock UK time. 12 o'clock UK time, Saturday afternoon, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Click the union flag anytime sort of after 11.30 we'll be there. And that's it. Au revoir, boys and girls. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye now.